This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. It's time for another retro interview with a celebrity that is no longer with us. This time around, it's a chat I had back in September of 2004, and it's with someone who left us just recently. This was a woman who came to her careers late in life. In her 60s, she took up painting, but it was the trailblazing career that she started in her late 30s that brought her to our attention. She was a pioneer woman in the male-dominated world of stand-up comedy. She was born Phyllis Ada Driver back in 1917, but we knew her as Phyllis Diller. At the time that we spoke in 2004, Phyllis was still acting, but no longer traveling around doing stand-up. She had retired from that life two years previous. But a documentary film called Good Night, We Love You that featured her last stand-up show was about to be released, and that gave us an excuse to talk about her career. Here is part of that conversation now. You are the subject of a new documentary film called Good Night, We Love You. Yes. This took it's a, it's a it's a really fun documentary. It's really uh, a filming of my last show, my swan song show in Las Vegas. This was in uh, in May of two thousand two. There you go. Now, how did you decide when it, that you wanted to stop? When I had to take a wheelchair in the in the in the airport. Okay. Yeah, I, the airports have gotten so big. And I, I can walk. I walk great. But I can't walk that far, that fast, that long. And anyway, I, you know, 48 years of that really uh, disciplined business uh, was uh, time. I, I still enjoyed the on-stage hour, but all of the stuff around it was a lot of work. Do you miss it now that it's been no, a little no, over two? No. Not at no. all? No, 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 because it was a big, big, tense business. And, and it was work, and I'm enjoying being a lazy slob. <laughs> well, every, every once in a while you, you do show up on things like, uh, you, you did one of the soap operas, did you not, recently? Well, I, I'll be coming on that again, Bold and Beautiful. Right. Yeah, I'm a regular on that. I have a, an old character I play, which I adore, Gladys Pope. <laughs> and uh, I do a, a little thing, whatever's around here, and, uh, you know, if it's enough money, I'd go somewhere. But I, w but I don't do stand up. Right. You know, it's I have a new career. I paint. Do you paint? Oh boy, do I paint! What types of things do you paint? You name it. Name anything. Uh, I paint it. Uh, landscapes. Yep. Yep. How, how long? Faces, faces. Faces. Animals, trucks, cows, <laughs> anything. When did you start? Trees. When did you start <laughs> painting? Nineteen eighty-six. So you, you took that up late in life. I, well, I've got a whole new life now. Well, good for you. Well, see, that's why it was not not a big deal to give up the last one. I have a new one waiting. Hmm. You, know, you did stand up for quite a long time, and it's something uh, that I can say your generation of comics continue to do stand up. It seems today that a lot of people who get into stand up comedy get into stand up comedy as a route to getting that sitcom and then maybe acting in movies and never do stand up again. But you did it for quite a long time. Well, you realize that uh, Jerry Seinfeld, his main love, and he keeps going back to stand up. Right. And so does uh, Robin Williams. And here's. And Robin, of course, is a big movie talent. You know, Robin Williams. Absolutely. He's done yeah. all, these, all these wonderful movies. And, and, and Seinfeld, they love stand-up. And I'll tell you why. There is no greater thrill. You, you enjoy the adulation of the crowd. It, that word is not adulation. Uh, I never worked for that at all. The laugh. Right. Wow. To hear <laughs> 2,000 people laughing all at once. Mm-hmm. Oh, baby, there's nothing like it. Now, um, you, you don't hide your age. No. You're, you're three years shy of 90. That's it, and I'm not shy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you've had a long, illustrious career. Um, your, your career was also tied a lot to a lot of the stuff that Bob Hope did. You well, did. we were big buddies, and yeah. he, uh, he hired me for so many things, television and, and, the, and movies, and it was a big part of my career. I mentioned at the beginning that you uh, were a groundbreaker. There weren't a lot of female stand-ups, were there? Well, no, there weren't any. There weren't any. There weren't any of note. Right. Uh, and, you know, and, 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 uh, and for 10 years, I was the, really the only one. 
And after 10 years, then there came along uh, two others, Joan Rivers and Tody Fields. Oh, Tody Fields. Of course, Fields. Joan has carved a great career. Mm-hmm. And, and for a while, I guess Moms Mabley did some stand-up as well back then. Well, I'm not counting her. Okay, okay. Why wouldn't you count Moms Mabley? I don't know. I think she had no teeth. <laughs> 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 what, what, do, what do you think of of, uh, of the female stand-ups that are around today compared to uh, the time? Some of them are brilliant and some of them aren't. Well, of course, that's what the hell. That's the way everything is. Mm-hmm. There's always a few wonderful, wonderful, brilliant ones who will make it to the very top. And then there are others who may make uh, other other careers based on that, what they've done in stand-up. You know, like writing and editing and if they're devoted to comedy. Yeah. As we, as we said, not everyone has it to make it in front of the audience. Right. As, as we said, you know, there was a lot of, of uh, you were a groundbreaker at the time, and there weren't a lot of female stand-up comics. Is there it, weren't any, darling. There it, weren't any. Exactly. Is it tougher for a woman to be a stand-up comic than a man? It has nothing to do with it. You're either You're either funny or you aren't. And it isn't tougher. It is not tougher. Uh, some ladies will tell you it is because they'll find any excuse to say why they didn't make it. So, so then why do you feel there haven't been as many women who were successful at it, at least in your time frame, than, than the men? Well, in any time frame, anything where there's as much the possibility of so much money, if there were uh, any who could, they would. It's a, a very difficult thing. It's a long way from the living room when you're funny at parties to the white hot light and a large room with uh, thousands of people. When you did stand up, you had this persona. How did the Phyllis Diller persona evolve? It evolved gradually uh, from the first time. Little, little by little by little, it evolved to this uh, dummy harridan who was always just a little this side of chic and always outrageous in some way, the hair and the boots and always gloves. I never, I couldn't go on stage without the gloves. You realize all clowns wear gloves, uh, even the... Mickey Mouse. <laughs> okay. All clowns wear gloves. And I, I always wore the gloves. And, of course, I, I, I invented that persona, that stage persona. And here I am, the, the stupid housewife, who is obviously a part of the problem. <laughs> 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 People love stupidity. You came late in life to painting, but you also came late in life to comedy. Weren't you about 37 years old when you started? Exactly, exactly. I was, that's what I, in those days, I was considered really old. So what or how did you make the leap from... From being a housewife to being a stand-up comic. Well, I had a, I had an audition. I got the job, and I never was out of work after that. Where did you audition? Uh, the Purple Onion in San Francisco. And did any of your family or friends said, you know, Phyllis, this is this is not something for you to do. Settle down. You're a 37 year old woman. What are you doing doing stand-up? That's exactly what they said. They said, uh, don't give up your day job. <laughs> 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 and that was a dear friend. Now, one of the things that uh, that is a trademark uh, about Phyllis, uh, the, the clothes, and of course we've heard it already, the laugh. Well, that's my natural laugh, and I love to laugh, and it's very helpful to laugh, and uh, more people ought to laugh more often. I couldn't... They're using it now to make people come to life or on their way to the grave. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Laughter. Now, now do you, uh, you... You've done... What is it? Sixteen movies? Oh, more than that. More? Uh, maybe, maybe about thirty by now. Okay. Uh, what did you enjoy about acting? What was the acting? Oh, acting. Well, I enjoy the stand-up most of all because it's a, a, a instant gratification. Mm hmm I mean, you hear those laughs, you feel wonderful after the show. Making movies is a very boring process. It, it, it is, it's so, God, I admire movie stars very much for their patience and being able to work in those situations. You see, they have to fake everything. When people meet you, 
are they surprised that you're not the Phyllis Diller that they see on stage? I mean, there, there's that. They used, they, people used to be extremely surprised. They expected this crazy woman. Well, you know, people, uh, limo drivers would come to the airport thinking that they would be would recognize me, and, and and they wouldn't hold up the sign with my name on it, and they they'd look at everybody and they couldn't find anybody they thought was I because I don't look like the Harrison on stage. One of the other things you were also talking about in your career, which a lot of women didn't talk about publicly at the time, you talked about plastic surgery. Oh, of course. It's very important. God, it's made a new woman out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy about plastic surgery. Now, when did you first have plastic surgery done? 1971. I was 55. I had eye bags and a chin droop. And so I went in for everything. I come, well, my nose was a mess. They named the movie after my old nose, Z. <laughs> <laughs> so they did a complete face job, eye job, neck job, everything job. Boy, I came out looking like a million. <laughs> but like I said, you, you talked about it, and then this this was just unheard of at the time. Not at the time. That was brand new. That, that No one ever did that. That's because I'm that kind of a person, you see. I'm a completely open person. I mean, if you want uh, if you want to be friendly with people, you have to be open. Now, uh, we, we talked a little bit about Bob Hope, and uh, when, when Bob passed away, of course, there was a lot of uh, footage showing uh, the tours he used to uh, go on to entertain the troops. And a lot of those... Uh, film clips involved you. What was it like going on those tours, especially during war years, and, and entertaining troops? Well, it was a serious business. And, of course, he was the master because he had so much support. He had NBC and the government behind him, and uh, he really knew how to do it because he started small with his first little appearance, and, of course, he <laughs> fell in love with the whole idea because there's no greater audience than those G.I.s who are starved for entertainment. And uh, so it just grew, 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 grew until it was, till his was just a massive uh, traveling show. Uh, you, you got on this huge transport, government transport, with seats about, so, 68 people. And it's like flying in a basement. No windows, <laughs> everything is gray, gray uh, metal. With things, uh, pipes and things, and things are moving, and pipes are moving, and steam, and <laughs> it's like uh, there was. But then, of course, the shows usually twenty thousand people seated outdoors in a na natural amphitheater. Mm -hmm. That was Vietnam. That's the one I went to. Right. I, mean, I went on one of his big Christmas ones, and then we made uh, appearances. We go to the hospitals and, and try to cheer up the people who had been badly wounded. Based on the type of routines that you did at the time, uh, it might have been great fodder for you because, you know, you travel with someone like Bob Hope and there's always uh, a Raquel Welsh or an Ann Margaret or some beautiful young girl out there to entertain the troops and out walks the persona that is Phyllis Diller. Oh, that's right. It was... It was <clears throat> I was the ugly one, you know. <laughs> and... <laughs> And it was fun, you know. He'd he'd stand me next to a a, a, a great looking brunette like Raquel Welch and and ask, is it true that blondes have more fun? And of course, it isn't in in that case. He he, he always made fun of me, and I loved that. Did you write all of your own material? Uh, I structured it all and wrote, I would say, seventy five percent, and the other was just one liners that I bought here and there. Hmm. Now, uh, we've often heard about Fang. <laughs> oh, yes. People adore Fang. Where, where did you come up with the idea of calling your husband Fang? Well, it was an ad lib very early in, the, in my business. It was, a, I, it was the first character that I ever invented. <clears throat> and I invented, of course, and in, in, in the meantime, I've invented his mother, his sister, and my sister, neighbors, cops, uh lots of people, but he was my first invented character. In other words, I was simply talking about every husband. And I remember the, 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 the bit was uh, I had had a car accident, 
and I had to call home and tell old Fang Face. <laughs> In those days, there was uh, most ca- families only had one car. Right. And it was really the man's car, and it was a part of him. So it was a terrible thing to have to call home and tell him that you've wrecked it. And I said, I've had a little accident at the corner of Post and Gary. And he said, Post and Gary don't cross. I said, they do now. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, you managed to keep through the entire career, and maybe it's a difference in how business is done today with, uh, without the glare of media the way it is today. You managed to uh, have a family, raise five kids, and no one ever really knew about that. They just knew the persona of Phyllis Diller on the stage. Well, that's true. That is true. It 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 just was one of those things. I simply had to do it because I was I I married a man who could not make a living. So thank God, or I never would be me. If I married a man who could uh, support the family, I would just be the funniest woman on my block. <laughs> so you became a, a comedian out of necessity. I mean, I'm the love for the business, obviously, but out of necessity. Th- that is true. And there's nothing like p- poverty to inspire you. Uh, now you're home painting and occasionally yes. sh- and, and occasionally showing up on The Bold and the Beautiful. And, oh, yeah. And it sounds like uh, you're continuing to enjoy yourself. Oh, completely. But, oh, yes. I'm having a lot of fun. Oh, that's great. We've had a lot of fun talking to you. Well, Peter Anthony Holder, what a name. <laughs> God, that's brilliant. Oh, thank you. You have this lovely show where you just talk, talk, talk. Thank you. It's wonderful, and you have a lovely voice. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and I hope to speak with you again. I hope to speak with you again, too. Take okay. care, Phyllis. Bye. Bye-bye. That was part of an interview with Phyllis Diller. Phyllis died recently on August 20th, 2012, at the age of 95. According to her longtime manager, she died peacefully in her sleep with a smile on her face. You can hear the full interview with Phyllis on my website at thestufffile.com. Click on the Celebrity Audio Files, and you'll find the interview with Phyllis and also interviews with others. They're all listed in alphabetical order, and you can play them right off the page. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.